Jack Moffat, your brain on sound. Hey everybody. So your brain is what processes all the stuff that you get through your ears. And it seems really simple. You hear things that happen in the world. Air vibrates, it vibrates your ear, your brain hears it. But it's really like magic. There's a lot of weird stuff that goes on. Now I'm going to talk about some of those things. So the first thing is, you have a limited range of what you can hear. So it starts about 20 hertz, goes up to about 20 kilohertz, and then you're into dog whistle range, and then afterwards all kinds of crazy stuff. And outside of that, you can't really hear anything, but inside of that, you can pretty much hear stuff. Um, one of the cool things your brain can do is, is called the cocktail party trick. Basically, if you're at a cocktail party and you hear multiple people talking, because you have two microphones essentially, you hear each voice differently in each ear, you can disambiguate the voices and you can hear distinct people talking. Another thing that's uh, kind of funny is uh, tinnitus. If you have hearing damage, you'll actually hear ringing in the same frequency range as the damage is in. So um, whenever you hear your ears ring, it actually means that the cells that, or the neurons that used to process that frequency are dead. Oh, yeah. You also, uh, your brain really likes to react to things um, and seek out things. So uh, phone ringers, for example, are all in the same audio range as the human voice, um, between two and four kilohertz. And your brain really looks for the signal. So if you ever hear your phone ring and you look down, it's not really ringing. That was probably what it was. Um, one of the first things I'm going to demonstrate is called the missing fundamental. So all sounds are made up of sine waves, a group of them. Um, there's a fundamental one that gives you the pitch, and then some other ones. And essentially what happens is if you delete the fundamental pitch, your, and keep all of the rest of them, your brain uh, actually will fill in the fundamental pitch for you. Um, I'm not gonna be able to make it over there in the time for that slide. Um, but it doesn't change the pitch. You would think that you would hear a different thing, but you don't. Now this one, I'm gonna make it over here and I'm gonna show you what this is. like it's continually going down and it will keep going forever but actually it's a loop a short loop so you're tri the it tricks your brain into thinking that it's forever decreasing in pitch um, you also have um, continuity of pitch so if you hear a pitch continuing to rise but it has a hole in the middle so it actually stops if there's something masking that hole like some noise like a short burst you'll actually continue to hear uh, the the pitch rising your ear will just completely fill in all of the missing information even though it's not there and this happens all sorts of ways so you can have a continuously rising pitch and one that's going down and the middle one is uh, has a hole in it and you'll still fill it in it's actually pretty crazy another one in 1839 they f found this thing called binaural beats now if you ever hear heard someone tune a piano if you have two sort of notes uh, they're like an octave and they're slightly out of pitch, they'll phase together and you'll hear this sort of beating sound. But binaural beats happens on headphones. You play one frequency in one ear, a slightly different frequency in the other ear, and if they're really close together, your brain will start making the beating all by itself. Um, there's this uh, woman named Deutsch uh, who comes up with all of these audio illusions. One of them is uh, the glissando illusion. Um, and the glissando illusion is another one. You need two speakers. Um, you play an oboe, for instance, a constant pitch, um, and you swap it between the speakers over and over and over. And then on the other speaker of, of the oboe, uh, you have something that goes up in pitch and down in pitch and up in pitch and down in pitch, and those are swapping. And your brain will actually, uh, the, you'll hear the oboe switching, but you won't hear the other one switching, and you'll actually, it'll be spatially uh, oriented, so you'll see it sort of go. Um, Another one is the McGurk effect. This one's really weird. If you, wa if you take a TV recording of someone talking and you dub out the sound and put in a different sound, so since, since they say ba and you dub in ga, then the person will actually hear da. It's crazy how the multimodal the brain is in respect to hearing. And all of these tricks make it possible to do audio compression. So files are big. It takes like 50 megabytes to store four minutes of audio. But if we delete everything that the brain can't hear, we can make the files much smaller. So one way to do this is called the absolute threshold of hearing or equal loudness curves. Basically, this is how well you can hear at different ranges. So you can hear really well at this bottom part, and at the low end and the high end, you can't hear very well. Well, at a certain point, you can delete all of those things that you can't hear very well because you can't hear them anyway. There's also uh, masking. And in masking, you have uh, sounds will um, just hide other sounds. So for instance, if your cat is scratching on a post, and you can hear that in a quiet room, and then someone runs the vacuum cleaner, you can no longer hear the cat. So you might as well delete that. 
And the weird thing about masking is it even works in time. So even if the sound is before the loud sound, it will disappear. And it also disappear a little while after. Um, and those kind of things all get combined into things like MP3 and get rid of the sounds. So 